Good morning. My name is Alan, and this is the Old Guy Stuff channel, where I am going to do a review, giving my two cents worth, on the Victor Knox Ranger Grip Boatsman. And the reason I'm doing this review today is because I've used this particular knife slash multi-tool for about four to five years. I've got a lot of information I can give about it. I have noticed there's hardly any reviews of these online. And the ones that I have seen are pretty much just an unboxing type deal. In other words, you know, they open up a blade and they say, this has a knife blade, this has a bottle opener, that kind of review, but they don't actually show you using it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is a small repair project because this just popped up. And we'll see how this boatsman does on this repair project. That I'm going to do. Now the repair project is going to require a few things. First of all, I'm going to have to deal with some paracord that's all messed up. <clears throat> I'm going to use part of the boatsman to go through this tennis ball and be able to tie this one paracord off onto this loop, which is two strand diamond knot. <clears throat> this goes to a tether ball system I made for my dog <laughs> and uh he just shredded it but it's been lasting him over six months so i'm pretty happy with it <clears throat> and he loves playing with it so let's get to work all right first things first i need to just cut the end so that it's not all frayed i got dog spit all over it so i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to melt the ends or not okay i've got the um serrated blade here that people say is really good for paracord as long as i don't do it very hard i should get a decent cut and i did okay <clears throat> that is all i need for this particular knife blade at this time so i'm going to close it down um, it's a locking blade and this if you push the logo is what allows the liner lock to close all right so my next part is I'm just going to use a lighter here and see if I can melt these ends because I don't like frayed stuff and this will make it a little bit easier to deal with. Okay, I think that's got it. Now, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to push this paracord through this tennis ball. And I already put holes on both sides. Now, you could do that with the awl, but I did that with the drill bit because I have... Um, Drill bit has got a hexagonal shank, and I just put it into this bit driver that's made into the handle of this Ranger Grip. Now, on this Ranger Grip Boatsman, I think every Ranger Grip should have this. I really do. I don't think it would be too difficult for Victor Knox to do that, but it would make their knives, their, their big knives like this, more functional. Just my opinion. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to open up. The Marlin spike, which does have measurements for uh, inches and centimeters. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's so shiny. It just makes it harder for my eyes to see. This part here is if I was going to use it on, say, uh, small nuts and bolts or uh, like the D-shackle type thing uh, that you might find on oxygen tanks. And I'm not sure how big those are, but I've used it on some that were about a quarter of an inch. So it does work for some of those things. Now, what I'm going to use is this eyelet here. <clears throat> Anything you can imagine having to put a paracord or some kind of cordage through, uh, any type of project like I'm going to do. Okay, so this is, this is what I would do. And normally what I like to do on this, I'm going to put it through without that being on there. And I'm going to push it through here like this. So I have the eyelet here. Now I'm going to run the paracord through it like that. And then I'm going to pull it back out. Okay, so now I've got this paracord going through here. So what I need to do now is just tie off on to my loop. The whole purpose of this loop is so that it doesn't let the cord come all the way through the ball. And this has worked um, six months. I've got a pretty good sized puppy at uh, six months he's already about 70 pounds full grown he's going to be about 180 so i wanted something that uh you know would be able to take the kind of abuse he's going to put it through and he loves playing with this so 
I'm just gonna hook myself up something like a uh, taut line hitch, but not an exact taut line hitch. I'm not gonna worry about showing how to make this, but this is the type of taut line hitch that will never slip unless I want it to slip. Okay, now I'm gonna tighten this down some. I'm gonna remelt the end. Now normally at this point, I would actually whip the ends, <clears throat> but then that, that would take a lot of extra time, so I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna use the pliers on this. Grab this edge here, and give it a really good pull, make it nice and tight. Now, got to get this part through the tennis ball. And I realize this is the knot here, but this will work really good. But I'm going to pull that part down like this. Now, I got this here. It'll be a little difficult getting the knots through this, but that's okay. That's what I want. I did pause for a moment because I had to do some pulling on it. Okay, so now this goes through here. That is not going to let the tennis ball slip off the cord at all so now i'm going to go set this back up in the yard where he plays with it and i'll show you what that looks like okay so this is the basic setup and i can adjust the height of this if i want to uh, i don't leave it like that and he goes absolutely crazy if i tied a towel to it so i'm going to do that at the end I am going to take a moment to do some basic knot adjustments on here, but it's going to take a few minutes, so I'm not going to actually show that. Okay, so I've got my <clears throat> knot adjusted, and I can actually lengthen that out some. I'm going to tie the towel to this, and he's going to have fun playing with it. I did not intend for this video to take as long as it's going to take, but this little project just popped up and I thought it was a great opportunity to actually show some things on a knife. Okay, so we um, we got to talk about the Marlin Spike already, so that's good. Got to talk about these pliers. Uh, there's a drawback to these pliers though. And that is, <clears throat> if I've got a nut or a bolt where the head is up against the edge of the, uh, the working surface, like the wood, um, and it's not right up against the edge, then even though these pliers will open up wide enough to accommodate this 7 16 inch bolt, and it won't open any wider than that, so 7 16 is gonna be the limit. But what happens is you're not going to actually be able to make contact, good contact anyway, with this part of the pliers, okay? Um, I could squeeze down with this, but if it's really tight, then I run a risk of marring up the edges of the nut, okay? And I don't want to have that happen because later on, I might want to use a socket on it, which could be a better, you know, way to go. And if I mess it up, then the socket's going to have some difficulty probably. Okay, so, show you where something really shines on this. And by the way, I never use those wire strippers, so can't tell you anything about them. Remember I mentioned that I think all the Ranger grips should have this bit driver that they've got here. Now I can put screwdrivers in it. In fact, it comes with uh, two screwdrivers, um, Phillips and a uh, common or standard, okay? But <clears throat> I can use anything that's got that type of shank on it as long as it's quarter inch. Okay, so this is a quarter inch shank and I've got this attached to a deep socket. I'm going to put this on here, and it's going to hold in really well, okay? I'm not sure if it's magnetic or not, but it holds in really well, okay? So I can take this now, put it on here, and I can loosen up this tight nut until maybe I can use my finger with it, okay? And I can tighten it back down. Now... If I don't have enough reach to get into the part of um, 
this is a boatsman, right? So say in my boat, I need to reach some, a little further in for using a socket or something like that. Anything that's got an extension on it's gonna work good. This is a Leatherman uh, bit driver, okay? And Leatherman makes a ratcheting bit driver. I just don't have it, okay? And this fits perfect in there. So now I can slide this into here and I can get more reach if I need to. Let me zoom out some. I get more reach if I need to, so you know, however long I need it, I've got it. Now, normally I would want to use a ratchet on something like this, but if I don't have that ratchet, I'm on my boat, um, which I don't have, unfortunately, <laughs> crying, um, then this can help me out in a pinch. Okay. Put that aside. All right, talk about some other things on this. We already, um, so I'm using a knife blade. So let's talk about the um, the bottle opener, okay? Which you're also calling a wire stripper and a wire bender. And I've used this for bending wires a lot. I've only stripped one wire with it. It does work. Um, I just don't have any wires to strip right now. And the bottle opener is excellent. I've got some bottle openers don't actually work at all, but this works great. Okay, let's talk about the screwdriver part on this. And give you an important length here from this area here where my finger is up to the tip is three quarters of an inch. Now, why is that important? Well, what if I've got some recessed holes? Okay. And I need to get to a screw that's in a recessed hole. Well, I can do that up to three quarters of an inch with this and then turn to tighten or loosen the screw provided it's no more than three quarters of an inch. So it won't work on this wood block because this wood block, <clears throat> I put a line on how far down I've got the uh, little ledges inside those holes. But this little block, this part here is an inch. So this is not gonna work good on that, okay? But if I have the screws going in to say this part, and we're up on the top, then yes, this is gonna go good on it. However, I, I'm no good really with uh, the, the flathead or the standard screwdrivers, okay? I'm not really. So if I was gonna do something like that, then of course I might wanna use the one on the can opener because the little um, screwdriver tip that they put on it is actually really good for doing Phillips. And since this can do a Phillips, I can set this in here and basically, be able to tighten my Phillips screw. Now, the problem with this is though, if I was tightening it up into here, I'm only gonna be able to go down about three millimeters because the dimensions on the can opener itself is not that good for it. But, here's where your bit driver comes in. Now I've got more reach. That's why I think that they ought to put this on all of the Ranger grips, all of them. Okay, let me get a can and we'll work on some can opening. Well, would you look at that? It's already open. What a miracle. Yay. Okay, just kidding. Okay, let me turn that over. I'm sorry. I've got this kind of warped sense of humor. Okay, so this can opener. I'll tell you the things I like about it and I don't like about it. First of all, this grips really well with this curved part here that goes up under the outside edge of the rim. That grips really well. Okay. And it does cut through the metal very nicely. What I don't like the screwdriver tip sometimes hangs up, okay? But, and I'm not gonna go all the way through the can. I can go through the can pretty decently, okay? And I could go all the way around it if I wanted, but it, it does work very good. I just, I don't like this tip because sometimes it hangs up. Uh, if you watch his videos, and this is a shout out to Mr. Felix Embler, who is totally awesome with hundreds of videos on his Switch Army knives and things you can do with them. He does show a technique, and I am no good at this, where he takes the Victor Knox can opener, sets it on the can, and just spins the can, and in two seconds, his whole can is going to be open, and it doesn't even show these little uh, ridges or anything. I mean, guy's really awesome with it. <clears throat> it's a good can opener. I just don't prefer the little tip. That's all. Close that up. Okay, so that is 
all the stuff on this side right here. So let's talk about corkscrew. If I've got a tight knot, I can use this on a cork. I can use this on a knot and just kind of put it in, give it a little twist and do some tugging and it's going to help loosen up a knot. And then I can use my, my pliers on this if it's still a little tight but not too tight. So this is really good for doing knots. So I like having the corkscrew even though I don't drink wine so I don't open corks. Okay. Now let's talk about this all. Okay, it's pretty stiff. I actually broke a thumbnail one time on uh, the Ranger Grip Alls. So <laughs> I gotta be a little careful with that. <clears throat> now, it's got an eyelet in here for sewing. I'm not gonna sew anything today, but I have done a lot of leather work. Kind of like this where I made a, um, an Altoids case for my belt pouch and used the awl for doing the sewing. This is all one piece of leather other than the belt pouch part. Uh, but the awl actually let me sew all that. You just use it like a speedy stitcher. Okay, the awl can be used for drilling. And I've already drilled like three holes in this piece of wood using that. Um, I don't care for using it, but you can, okay? And basically, you just would, and I'm not going to go all the way through, but you would stick the awl into whatever you're going to drill and you would turn. But what I like to do is turn the cutting, the, the surface that I'm going to be drilling if it's a, just a small piece of wood like this. Okay. So you either go clockwise with the knife or you go counterclockwise with the wood. Okay. And you start drilling into it. Now, you know what? There's a much better option. You know, let's undo this. Okay. Much better option. Because, remember that bit driver? Well, I've got bits. I mean, if, if I've got this on a boat, I am going to have a toolbox on the boat. So this, this boatsman can really help. Um, because say I don't actually have a uh, drill on the boat, this can help me drill holes, okay? And especially if I'm using the ratcheting bit driver that I am going to get, but if I'm, if I'm using that, because I can set this into the hole, and actually, and make it to where you can see it better, I'm already through it. So it's a much better option. If I wanted a bigger hole, what I would do is I normally will make a, 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 a thin or narrow hole, and then I would put a bigger bit. So like so that would say I wanted to go a quarter inch hole like I did here. Okay, so then I would do that. So I'd start with the small one. That way I got a pilot hole going, and then I'd put this into the boatsman. Okay. And go ahead and now make this uh, thinner hole bigger. Let's see, I'm leaving stuff out, I know. i got to be leaving stuff out. Oh, here we go. The things I never use. Okay. Zoom this in some. Tweezers. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the tweezers, but I actually have something wrong with my hands. So the tweezers are just too small for my hands to be able to uh, manipulate or use uh, easily. And chances are, if I'm using, say, on like a boat or camping or something like that, and I'm trying to use these tweezers, I'm probably going to be dropping them. And then I might not ever find it. So I don't use tweezers. Toothpick, I'm not ever going to use that. And why? Because it's plastic. Okay. Once I put that in my mouth and start going between my teeth or whatever I'm doing with it, first of all, it's going to kind of mangle it up some. And second, it's going to be kind of nasty. And if I don't clean it really, really well and I stick it in there, I got a chance of getting all kinds of bacteria and stuff up inside the scales on the uh, knife. And I don't want that to happen at all. Okay. So let's kind of take that for what it's worth. Now, This went about eight minutes longer than I wanted it to, but that was because um, I did that project for fixing my dog's tether ball, tether ball pole. God, you had to say it right. But 
<clears throat> if I had to give this a rating on a scale of one through 10, I give this a 10 easy. Definitely. Okay. Now here's, here's some issues though. When I got this, let me put the, uh, when I got it about four or five years ago. <clears throat> I saw it online actually. And I said, Hey, you know what? I think this would be a really good tool. And my wife said, buy it. And I said, Whoa, no, it's about $130. And she said, well, get it anyway. Right? So we did. My wife is a sweetheart like that. Okay, so I got it, paid $127. I really think this is a great tool. Okay, I really, really do. Um, I'm still kind of out the lunch on the, is it worth $127 though? $100, yeah, I can go with that. But $127, mm, I don't know. But I just checked the price like an hour ago. It's $181 now. I have not seen... Reviews on these, other than unboxing reviews, where people do this. Okay, we're opening up the Ranger Grip and it has a corkscrew. It's got a knife blade. It's got a Marlin spike and this is how the reviews go. Um, they don't actually really show using it. So I did show some good uses for this, okay. Uh, and I'm not trashing these people. They're making lots of money on those channels. I'm not looking to make money at all. <laughs> um, I just want to give my opinion out there. And you guys, if you're thinking about buying one, you can make that decision if it's going to be worth your, your money or not. But for my uses, this has been very, very good. Okay. Definitely worth $100 in my opinion. But $181? I don't know about that. Okay, that's just my two cents worth. My name is Talon, and my channel is Old Guy Stuff. And today we were doing a uh, a review, giving my two cents worth of opinion on the Victor Knox Ranger Grip Boatsman. Many thanks for watching. Have a great, peaceful, wonderful day, and goodbye.